Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to look at some preparation work in order to attack the Chaos Dragon. And next episode we shall be doing that. I won't do the whole thing. In fact I'll only show you clips that I've already done. So let's get started. So as I said I've already done this. Actually I've got 10 Chaos Shards and I've put one away. The reason for that, the use of... Oops, remove that. Need to make sure I'm in the right place before I press U. But the use of this, we can actually use uh, a tempered glass jar to make nine large ones. The use of nine large ones will make a chaos shard, but we've got to use this uh, molten essence of creativity. And that's a bit on the hard side. Uh, but between episodes, let's have a look at this. The recipe for this molten essence is basically this creative essence in a tempered glass jar will produce molten essence of creativity. And the, the recipe for that is this. Uh, so extreme crafting or ultimate crafting tier four. So I'm going to prepare some of this stuff between episodes, I think, and see if I can ever manage to do it. Never done it. Never done extreme crafting. Never seen much of a point in it. But this one actually could well be a point because getting these things is tough. So let's first of all have a look at, I've actually got some armor on. As you can, obviously you can see I've got some armor on. And I've got some relatively good enchants on it doesn't help you when you're fighting the um, the Chaos Guardian. It doesn't matter what type of armor you get, it goes straight through. The only thing that really matters for protection is the chest, place, chest piece. Uh, so let's have a look at this. Uh, you can enchant the armor reasonably well. This, if I have a look at the, let's have a look at this. If you have a look at the uses of the chest, the legs for instance, you can actually put these on an anvil and get enchants. Um, which I think you do initially, strip the enchanter from them, put the ones you want on, which is a good way to do it. So you can do that with all of these things here. One, if you have a look at the sword, and I've got the sword, I th think it's in here, yes. You see, I've got some good enchants on this sword. So you, there's no point in using the sword, it's not good enough for the Chaos Dragon or, any, oops, or anything like it. So have a look at the, re uh, the re uses of this one. Oops, wrong, did I press, hold on a second, I pressed the wrong button. Right again. The uses of this, right? So you can enchant it, but there's no anvil. So you have to put these enchants on uh, through books. So you can put the enchants on the on the anvil with books, basically, is how that works, or what that actually means. So I basically on this one, I've got all of good enchants. If you have a look at this, the draconic staff of power, uh, the uses of this one is similar you cannot put enchants on through the anvil here you can you can use it on a chopping board i think that's a look yes you can chop things on the chopping board which may be just handy um we've we, we've built this last time so i'm not going to bother cut but this is the recipe the next one we want to do so large chaos fragments like this draconic cores small chaos fragments um chaotic energy controllers draconic cores are too bad uh, Chaos energy controllers, that's actually pretty nasty one as it happens if you look at the recipe for this. This is four draconic controllers. Oh, actually it's not too bad. And small fragments. But you need three of these things, so it does add up. And then you need a chaotic core. Let's have a look at the use of this. Uh, it's on here. Chaotic core is made... Oh, I didn't look at the recipe for Sorry, I want to look at the recipe. It's made by a large chaos fragment plus... A lot of large chaos fragments. Basically, you need five. <laughs> so that, and then one hundred million X e OP, which isn't actually that bad. So that's really expensive stuff. Anyway, sorry. Let's go back to here. So again, you can enchant. You can enchant this with books. And let's have a look. First of all, at the draconic chest. But I've actually got some protect protection for and thorns on here as well. Mm. The way I've got thorns is I've been using uh, better end enchanting. Well, can have a look at that actually because I've got that stuff already prepared upstairs. So if we do um, Alt, and I'll actually have programmed a key for this. So let's just press Escape and Alt One, and you can see what I've got in the chest plate here. So I have got in here lots of these large um, capacity modules. Doesn't really, doesn't really. I don't have one spare, but. You've got these here. You've got these shield modules. So basically, the large capacity modules. Yeah, large shield capacity modules. These ones are better than putting four small ones in because you get an extra shield's worth of protection. So that's why you make the large ones. Here, I've got 
nine um, of the these ones, basically, the Regenerate Recovery Module. They give you a little bit of more shield, and they also reduce the time of how long it takes. So, for instance, at the moment, it tells you it takes 72 seconds to regenerate everything. So if I remove these out of here, let's just do that, because it's, it's no big deal. You'll see now it takes 6,200 seconds. Very, very long time. Let's put one back in again. It starts, I had one in before, so that was nearly six minutes, 10 minutes this one to regenerate this, which is far too long, you don't want that. Look, what I had in here before was this module, where it has it gone to, because I can't, ah, here we are. The flight module, so three by three. In other words, it takes up nice lots. We don't need the flight module for doing the uh, chaos dragon because we've got a jetpack and you can have the jetpack on at the same time as you've got the uh, the ch chest piece on, which is great. So you don't need it, and that saves up all, makes up all of these. Speed modules are good; they could make you fly faster or travel faster. Um, I like the food module, the auto feed, but I probably could get rid of that if I have another sort of feeding mechanism. Here we always need an energy module; otherwise things don't work. You also need a shield control module; otherwise you doesn't have that. And this one here, the Draconic underlying module is also a good thing to have. In fact, it's essential. Once that goes red, you just get out of there, basically. So that's the chest piece and all the bits I've got in it and why I've got them in it. The staff, or well, I've got one, two, three, four, five speed upgrades and a whole load of um, damage modules. These are expensive. Well, they're not. They're just a pain. So if you have a look at the damage modules in here, for example which is hard to see sometimes this one in order to do that you need the recipe for this one is two dragon's breath that's actually not such a problem two awake at uh, wyvern damage modules and bits of nuggets of awakened recon that's no big deal the recipe for these are two potions of strength two um the earlier level of damage module plus four draconic draconium ingots and then one draconic draconium core that's draconium core is just standard stuff these days these ones here are made with two potions of strength now making all these potions is a right pain so what i have done is i've automated uh, the potion broom and it works reasonably well it, it's not great but it works reasonably well but before we carry on with us this is an area of effect module it's good to have it allows you to have an area of effect. In fact, you can click on here in the HUD, and you can see you can change different things. So you can sp speed up your walking or slow it down. I like it slow because I've got um, Globetrotter Slash in from Botania, and that gives you a bit of speed. It consumes food, and it enables a shield, okay? Which is obviously what you want most of the time. Um, you can turn it off. And then you use less power. But at the moment we've got plenty of power, so I'm not too worried about that. So the shield is always visible. No, so it's only visible when you actually could turn it on and have a look at the self. Oh, oh, I've got it on at the moment. I would have to put it on before I can do that. So look. let's just put this let's just put this back in here. I should be able to shift click it to a slot. Now have a look. So you can now see that the shield is glowing. But if I change that setting again. Um, if I look at the oh, I need to go from old one, don't I? So we need this side now is, appears here. So the oh, I've got a draconic capacity. Don't really need this. But that's just full of um, draconic energy modules. Um, this one here, I have got. Let's go back to the HUD here. And I need the shield. So this would always visible now. Okay. The other ones we've got here was the staff of power. That's what I was trying to look at. So you can control the different things here. So, and I've got an attack radius of 10 by 10. So that means if you hit something within an, an a 10 by 10 range around that, it will also attack the same mod. So quite handy. You will find out when we start getting those wither guardians there. They're nasty. And I've got a mining area of effect. I've turned down to one. 
And then we've got this dig multi speed multiplier. Well, it's fairly useful to have the dig speed multiplier on here. So it digs, but you're only digging one. I'm only digging one block. If I turn this up to say next level is three, like that, the next one is five, and the last one is seven by seven. Digs a big hole if you're not careful in your base. And anyway, I've enabled safe mode. <laughs> it tells you about safe mode. This is uh, not does not break anything. It detects a tile entity within the range. Okay, so a tile entity is things like a furnace. So it doesn't break your furnaces. Will break your ground, but won't break your furnaces and your other bits and pieces. Right, so that one's that one done. So next one here is a draconic bow. I've got I've got still in HUD mode. Let's get rid of the HUD mode. Oh, well that's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. Options. Oh. Okay, I mean I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Oh, that tells you where you can put your HUD information, so you can actually. Do that. Let's get out of there. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Right, we'll go back to this one here and have a look at the bow. So in the bow, I have got three of these um, draconic accuracy modules. It's pretty inaccurate as it happens as, as things will go along. I've got five speed modules, and you can have up to eight. Sorry, you can have up to eight of these maximum stool. Stool eight. You can have maximum stool eight speed modules they were worth doing the protection velocity module sorry and then the damage modules of the rest well worth putting lots of damage modules in you can have a look at how much damage this does this is doing 82 well they're basically 83 op is how much it's using and damage should tell me why well, i'm not seeing the damage on this one maybe i need to be out of the screen oh yes it does tell me at the bottom no it doesn't tell me at the bottom that's interesting. Let's click this one. This one tells me I'm doing 282 damage. Now you can see, I oh, know. 81 is max damage. Per, uh, okay, max attack damage is 81. Sorry. So it's a pretty effective weapon. That'll kill pretty well most mobs in one hit. Uh, I actually did have this set up so I just had in it all um, damage modules, but it wasn't so good against the guardian with us because they have more health than the standard wither with us with all of them being at um these damage modules i was getting 314 or 320 damage per hit which is more than enough to kill the, uh, the the wither in one hit so that's why i basically changed it so now it's at a point where it's a bit lower so you can but if i want to grind with as manual i can grind them and then finish them off with the premium so i can get lots of premium essence which is a good thing to do. So that, I think, is that, isn't it? Is there anything else? This one here, the projectile immunity cancellation module. Don't need it. It basically just prevents Enderman from jumping out of your way. The penetration module doesn't do very much in terms of um, mob bosses because we're not actually aiming at targets behind that. So that will hit multiple targets. We're only getting one to hit that. Uh, for that one, you've dealt with this one. Gravity compensation is useful. It does help. It does mean the arrows travel further before they drop down, which helps you a little bit. The projectile velocity actually does the same thing, but increases the inaccuracy by 2%. So that's why you need these in here. And if you have a look at this one here, it should tell me. I need to go back to the screen, of course. Let's press the screen. If I look on this one here, it tells you the details here. So in the moment I've got 1% inaccuracy, that's okay, I don't mind that, that's not too bad. If I swapped out one of these speed and put in another damage, you'll see that the actual inaccuracy goes up to 5%. So I thought maybe it's better to be slightly more accurate, and a bit faster, than, than waste that. I could swap out a second one, and then you get a negative accuracy if you look do this like this. So this time we've got a minus 3 inaccuracy. Obviously, Minus three in accuracy means nothing. It means it's accurate. <laughs> so it's no no percent inaccurate. So it's going to be accurate. It doesn't mean you're going to get better accuracy. It just means you're going to get no. So I thought that was a good combination, and it is a good combination. You always and all of these need a, an energy module. So that that's fair enough. And I think that's the weapons. So what I did when I was, I set it up like this. Let's remove this out of here. I put the bow in the offhand and I put the sword, uh, sword, the staff of power in the, in the fighting hand. So when I wanted to attack people, I was using the left click for go up like this, 
looks like I'm not doing very much. And when I wanted to shoot, I just did it like, like that. Set a few arrows around. Hold on, let's press five. And they've got flame on the arrows. It's just, I think we did have a look at the enchants on these, did we not? So this one's got experience harvester five. Reaper five. Now experience harvester five gives you little, little balls of XP, which are really good. Reaper five gives you... A, actually, I'm not exactly sure what Reaper five does. I think it's this one here. Um, I think this gives you health back. No, I'm, no, I'm not 100% sure about that one. Sharpness 5 is fairly obvious. Lo looting five, 3 is the maximum of those two. That so makes it a little bit more dangerous. Um, what else? On the bow. Let's have a look at the bow. I didn't show you these. I've got infinity enchant. Now that basically means I can fire without arrows infinitely. Shotgun 4, it means you're shooting 4 arrows at a time, which is also quite handy. Flame, I'm put on because I like to see where the arrows are going. So if you see them not hitting the target, you know why. And Punch 2 gives them a little bit more uh, damage. It sort of, yeah, it pushes them back a bit. So on mob bosses, I don't think it makes much difference, but it doesn't do any harm. I've got it on, why not? And in fact, that's probably all the, uh, all the ones we've got on there. So that's the enchants. Oops, sorry. Let's have a look now at this. This is the uh, potion brew from Industrial Foregoing. But I'm using the same principle as I've got down here. So in here, I've got bottles coming in. Uh, in here, we have the ingredients that we're doing. We're just not doing these in the right order. And in here, we've got the, the brew stand. And underneath the brew stand, I've got hopper. Now, the hopper's locked. With this pist with this lever here so when i toggle the hopper let's have a look what we've got in here i think we've just got water bottles that's okay so when i toggle the hop this lever here it switches this turns this redstone torch on and this one off so it allows the, the bottles to go out they come into here so let's just take those out again like that and then we can, and then we can flick this back again and then the bottles come in and in fact, I'm doing exactly the same thing with a potion brew. A potion brew has a bug. Well, I would say it's a bug. In the sense of the outputs here, well, if you set the outputs here, for example, let's have a look. So we've got different colours. If you've never seen these things before, blaze is orange. So this is the blaze input here. So you say which side I'm putting blaze in. So in this particular case, I've set up refined storage. And here I've got a bottle and a blaze powder so this is on the right hand side on the left hand side i've got the importer which then picks up the stuff and puts it back into the system on the back here i've got a, a fluid exporter or just an exporter set in fluid mode exporting water so water is going into the potion brewer on the top i've got the recipes and on the bottom i've got the power you can't see it but there's a as one of those that um, ender gates from power on the bottom of this. So that's giving it power. Inside here, I've got a speed upgrade. So as I said, water, as you can see, you click this, it's coming from every face, but it's only possible from one face, so it's coming from the back, like this. Back is this one, isn't it? Yeah. These bottles, I tried to put them in from the top with the recipe, but it didn't work. The kit, well, they went into the inputs here. They didn't go into the bottle recipes here. So that's the out. Oh, sorry, rubbish. These are outputs. These are bottles of water. I didn't have a recipe. Okay, that's right. Sorry. Um, the brewing inputs. These bottles here. So the yellow ones, glass bottle. The glass bottles come from the right hand side. Uh, so that slot goes into the right side hand side. Before I had it in here, uh, and they were going in the top. So the input side, which is the blue one is set if we have a look to the upside here that's fine so i think that's all of the faces which which are covered aren't they so we've got blaze powder we've got power from underneath blaze powder and bottles are coming from the right hand side the actual ingredients to make the brew are coming from the top and the water is coming from the back and here we've got glass bottles now on this uh, importer here which is going to import stuff i've got some restrictions these are blacklisted. And what I'm blacklisting is water bottles, awkward potion, and thick potion. 
there's another one I would like to also add this mundane potion. And what these are doing, if something's gone wrong with the recipe and you're producing mundane or thick potion, then you don't want it to carry on doing it for all of the ingredients you're trying to process. So you might as well just uh, stop the, the extracting of those. Otherwise, it will export everything. But in full room, it does export everything before it's ready. So, for example, if you're trying to make um, Potion of Swiftness 2, you're, make, you're making Potion of Swiftness, which is uh, or, which is nether wart, sugar, and um, that will make swiftness, and glowstone makes swiftness too. So let's have a look. Let's just do that. At the moment, this is not, oh, it is pulsating. Let's turn this switch off here. That actually stops it pulsating because I don't want it to pulsate. I should also have a look on here. I've got here run with redstone signal, and I have a speed upgrade in here. To make it go quicker on the side here of this importer i've also got um run, only run with redstone signal and you'll notice that these two are opposites the same as the brewing standard did there so it's not going to export things while this is on of course a, you can't guarantee when you're going to put stuff into here so it, it does sometimes fail and you end up with some bottles. So now go and put them in the back and process them. So let's come back here and have a look at swiftness. Yeah. So here, for example, is a potion of swiftness. So if I control shift, click on that, and then I can say I want to make one like this. And start that. So it's going to make three of these. It needs one uh, another one and one sugar. And generally speaking, this works pretty well. I've, I've, as far as I can see, yes, I've got potions of swiftness here, speed, speed. So then I can just turn this back on again like this, and then this is going to cycle through, it's, so it's running, but it's got nothing to do. And then as soon as it switches over, which you should see this one go out, it takes about eight seconds, they then get drawn out, and it brings in the next set of bottles with some water in it, and then they get replenished here. So this, how do we do these timings? As, this was one problem and I'll show you that in a second so here we have a timer module from RF tools and I've set this one here to a delay of 160 which represents eight seconds and here I have a sequence and now the sequence that all I'm doing is basically turning it on for a period of time and then the rest of the time it's going off so this is the pulse that, that extracts the items and the rest of the time it's off which means that it's um, going being powered in fact it's telling you here it's in run once mode so it doesn't loop forever but it gets a pulse and runs the sequence so that allows this to be powered for a period of time like this as you can see and it goes off and here I've got a not gate this is a, a not great from project red it's quite nice because you can have multiple outputs from here so I've got a redstone wire which is going or redstone arlo which is going to the Potion bro. So you can see these is toggling over like this. There is a problem with this. There's is a bug in um, refined storage one for processed recipes. So for instance, let's have a look now at doing a, pro, a swift uh, swiftness two or strength two. It doesn't really matter which. I do want to do swiftness because I want to make some more speed growth upgrades. Here we've got twelve potions of swiftness two. So let's control shift click those and let's say we want to make one more. This is going to make three because we're make everything in threes so this time it's got another one glowstone and sugar i think that's a, the order it's going to do it in but the recipe doesn't have that recipe in it let's have a look over here in fact i could have done this from the recipe manager down here so if we want for example potion of swiftness which is this one come along and put that into the pattern maker here and because you should put it into the output of the pattern maker you'll see it's doing things so it should be doing nether wart sugar and glowstone it should i hope i've done a really which way it runs it works when it runs this way it's random actually as it happens we'll make three of these like this let's go and put that back again so we need that into this position here and then we shall make some of these so let's try crafting potions of swiftness too Let's make one of those. Start it. 
What frequently happens here is it doesn't work. What's wrong, Trauma? Yeah. It's, done it, it's put the sugar and the glowstone in the wrong order. So what you have to do is simply swap it over like this and then carry on. That's fine if, you've got, if you're making a stack of these things. It's fine. It works pretty well. So that's going to done that. And then this will be taken out. And then you'll get our three swiftness potion. As you'll see that the crafter's now not crafting anything in the crafting monitor. I haven't done much with uh, refined storage before. I thought it's a pretty decent mod. And it, the differences between this and applied energy sticks. Um, power is one thing. And the st disk storage is something else. Which is quite interesting. Uh and it doesn't have any sub networks, which is actually life <laughs> makes life a lot, a lot simpler. Um, but the disk storage works if I right click this here. I was thinking it was like applied energistic, so I was making small storage disks, which was a mistake because in applied energistic, the small droids will hold lots of many, uh, many well, two hundred fifty six of a, items of a low number. And large disks just hold 256 items of a large number. So you don't really tend to want to make those for certain odds and ends. And then with the, the main stuff that you're storing up, you come and do it like this. You come and put underneath here. I think it's here, isn't it? You, you put a, a refined interface. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I've got a refined interface underneath here. External storage interface. So then it's access. all of this stuff is then accessible from that. But that's, I guess that anybody who's done refined storage or planning knows the same thing. Oops, that gave me a shot. <laughs> I have to remember that. I probably should move this off the, uh, out of this hand while I'm talking. Because then you end up shooting weapons. And I think that's all of the preparation that I've been doing. There is something I wanted to make as it happens. I wanted to make this. I'm not, I've watched the video on two and this how to do the Chaos Dragon. Um, and I'm not very good at fighting, but they do be using this time in a bottle. So three gold, one clock, that's that basic, seven gold, two diamonds, one redstone, one bottle and two lapis, not too expensive. And then with this, it's actually completes a quest, I reckon. In fact, let's go and put these modules away and click the Quickly collect quest rewards. So we're back in a sec. Actually, before we do the quest rewards, there's one more thing I should look at. Um, it's the it's the advanced dislocator. It's in the curio slot. Very good thing to use. In fact, it's essential. Um, what you should also do is I've got a safe house, which is it's actually a rubbish. It's not a very good safe house. But this was actually quite good near chaos. Uh, this is the chaos guardian. If we look. If you left click it, it should tell you the coordinates. It's actually not right, this one. Uh, it does take you to the Chaos Guardian, I think, but it's wrong. It's looked wrong. Safe House. It's actually definitely, these are definitely wrong. I don't quite know why they, why they say they're wrong. Anyway, what you have is you select it. The red one that's highlighted here is the current one. So when you do it, a teleport command, you go to that location. If you want to add, you need to add fuel to it. So you just basically put ender pulls in your inventory and click all and that adds up fuel. Um, use teleport mode is, we don't care about that because we've got key bindings on this. It says here, you can switch between selected and blink. Now we'll have to explain what blink means. Blink means you jump about 16 blocks in the direction you, a random amount about 16 blocks from where, where you're standing. So for example, I've got to set in the controls, but let's have a look at the controls first because that's important. Controls. For some reason, if I look here at Draconium Evolution, I've got two buttons pressed program for this. I've got uh, the blink mode, which is Q. And on my mouse, I've got a Corsair mouse and I can program the button. I've got 10 buttons on, no, 12 buttons on the, on the left hand side. So I can let, program any of those buttons to different things. Oh, I've got fat fingers, I only use one. So there we are. And I've programmed this one on the mouse to Q, which I could press either on the key keyboard. And the reason you choose Q is it's quite near to the, the direction WASAD keys. Here I've chosen Z to do an advanced teleport, dislocated teleport. 
Every time I start the game, this one disappears, and that's me why I've got no idea. The rest of these, uh, we've covered this one tool configuration, uh, item toggle item dislocator, um, and this is the GUI one. Okay, so for example, if we press Alt 3. I simply it is the, the pickup tool is now active, so it picks up stuff, um, which is good to have. In fact, you should have that on when you're doing your fight anyway. It's sometimes a bit of a nuisance when you're picking up things you don't always want, so just turn that off again. And Alt 4 is the one that shows you this screen like this. So let's go out here a little bit and just press, let's just let's use a banana pole, but it doesn't matter very much. You just press Q and you jump it. Oops. He's jumping a reasonable amount of distance away from that. That's looking a bit... <laughs> oh, okay. I've got night vision on. Yes, that's one. I'm not... Oh, I'm pressing Q, that's why. And he lets, lets me jump through walls. Oh, very good. If I press Z, I come back to this space. So, for example, let's go to the end quickly and go to... Let's go to the Chaos Guardian here. This is this is my safe house, or what it was supposed to be. It wasn't, didn't work. I get, kept getting pulled around the wall here. Turn on the jetpack. In fact, that was the safe place here. I built it up, uh, made this little area. But he was still shooting through this. Not supposed to be able to shoot through obsidian, but it, there's four levels of old obsidian here. He was still shooting through it. So I had to develop a different strategy. So let's just press Z and go back to base, and turn off the jetpack again. So that was that. So let's now have a look at the quests, because why not? It's been a while. Start up once usual. Digital storage, well I've been doing a little bit of this, so we've got some a fluid grid and a crafter and a 4K storage disk. I've actually made it, I didn't make a 16, I made a 64. I should have to make a 16 to do that one. And then it should open up the 64 as well. I'm actually going to press, I'm going to collect all the rewards at once. But Tanya, well, this is mostly being Ruins of Winter, Spring, Summer and Autumn. I did those. I got a Ruin of Pride. I think that was a reward. If we've got the Gaia Spirit, I can very quickly do the Gaia 2. And then maybe we'd do that. No, we'll do that another time. Draconic Evolution. You see, I've got the Chaos Shard here and I've also got the Draconic Stuff at Power. I edited these, so I said I've actually got them completed because it wasn't picking up those quests for some reason. Because I never put them into my inventory. Industrial foregoing. I created an animal ranch and a mob crusher. Um, that was basically to get red, pink fluid, and this was to get milk. Simple as that. I'm not sure I've changed that. Or not. I'll have to double check. RF tools. I created an ore filter. I'm not sure what that one represents. Clicked a few valid items. Oh, okay, any of that box. Well, you see, I've done that already. Yeah. Um, let's go back again. And a crafted tier one. I'm using a crafted tier one over here. Like right, this. So out of here, we've got these two uh, plants. This is on the uh, pot power pot too. So it's getting in here relatively quickly. Oh, you saw that one going in here. So they're coming into here like this. I'm getting lots of seeds. I have to take the seeds out manually. That doesn't take very long. I can do all of that. Take the seeds out manually like that. Uh, and then it crafts up these. These then get exported um, into this chest here. So I'm getting reasonable amounts of uh, draconium ore and awakened nuggets. It's useful to keep nuggets. I can easily craft up ingots from nuggets, but uh, nuggets are used in all of these modules. So let's just put these seeds in here like that. They get processed in here. Uh, this time I've changed it. I had a hopper before and I've got an item pipe with a speed upgrade in it. <laughs> Ultimate pipe upgrade. So they, they're getting processed fairly quickly and coming into here, as you can see. Right. So, quest rewards. That's, I think that's all of them, isn't it? All of the pages. Like that. Did I miss anything out? Tanya, Draconic Evolution, RF Tools, Industrial Foregoing. I think we've covered all of these. So let's just claim all the requests here. And what did I get? A Ring of Magnetism, a Pity Back Hole Tank, 
1024 storage block from refined storage. Oh, that's actually nice. We can do that these days, so I might use that. Iron seed, certis quartz seed, a bando ore, which we've already, already got before, Mate material stoneworker factory, we've got that already, an infinite trident, uh -huh. a basic energizing rod, we've got plenty of those. I've got a meat feeder. This is one of the ways you can feed yourself automatically, but that doesn't go into a hot. Add on range tier 3, remote control storage. A band of mana, that's not too bad. A mana steel chest plate. A block of netherite and an obsidian boat. Now, did they go into my inventory? Because I'll just... Oh yes, not too much this time. In, f In fact, I've got some more quests completed because some of those things are actually completed quests. Let's have a look at that. I probably it's probably mystical agriculture because we've got these extra seeds we got a certis quartz seed I think that was the only one let's just claim that reward oh nice storage upgrade 5 that's quite a good one so that's it for this episode next episode I will cover the strategy I used for attacking and destroying the um, chaos guardian and I'm not very good at fighting I've always said that on bat fingers, I keep pressing the wrong button when I'm trying to fight and I end up getting killed. <laughs> there was another thing that got me killed a few times, and so pressing the, the Z key disappearing between game startups. <laughs> anyway, until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.